we do give God the glory, we give him the honor, and we give him the praise on this afternoon as we come together for another reflection and praise service. It's good for us to be here. Uh, the Lord has called our teacher, our pastor, to uh, present his word to us on this afternoon, and those that uh, are tuned in by way of social media, as well as those that are here in the uh, 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 sanctuary or the uh, uh, gathered in this place, it's good that we are here. So we uh, prepare our hearts and our mind at this time to receive the word. The word does tell us uh, as we prepare that the Lord is our shepherd. That means that he prepares everything for us as our host, and we will have a celebration one day with him in glory. So with that in mind, let us pray. Our Father, our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus, Lord, we do love you. Lord, we welcome you into this place, precious Holy Ghost, because we know that as the table is prepared for us, Father, even in the presence of our enemies, dear Lord, we will feast on your word, Father, on this afternoon, dear Lord. So, Father, right now, as Bishop Gwen, Father, becomes uh, 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 standing as John stood, Father, declaring your word, Father, and Father, recalling uh, sinners to repentance, even in his teaching, dear Lord. Father, we ask that you bless us, Father. And Father, we welcome those, Father, that have tuned into this broadcast, dear Lord, as well as those present here in the chapel, dear Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, give him some good glory. He's a good God and he deserves good glory. Amen. It is good for us to be here again. It is a day the Lord has made, and we rejoice, and we're glad to be here, glad to be in the service, glad to be in the company of all the saints of God and in fellowship. It's just good to be here. Everybody's smiling. Everybody's feeling upbeat. Everybody feels like they're glad to be on the planet, glad to have another opportunity to serve. Amen. <clears throat> Well, let's see where the Lord is going to take us. We thank the Lord for the song. Thank the Lord for the prayer. Thank the Lord for his Holy Spirit and his presence. Amen? Amen. Everybody look at somebody smile real quick. Just real quick. Let's just break the, break the yoke a little bit. There you go. You got to turn a little bit, switch a little bit. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. All right, Sunday was Paint the Church Orange in honor of the University of Illinois Homecoming, and it was also Back to Church Sunday. That's what we celebrated last Sunday. The message was, you can always come back home, okay, in alignment with National Back to Church Sunday. The scripture text came from Luke chapter 15, verse 11 through 14, and this is an interactive class, so we look for individuals to interact. Praise the Lord. I mean, that means you're going to have something to say. Okay, Luke 15, 11, Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons, the younger son, the younger one said to his father, father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all that he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. Now, even though the scripture speaks of the younger son's experience, the passage deals with several other areas of concern. Verse 11 opens with the words, Jesus continued. continued. Jesus continued. That simply means that something else preceded that text. Something happened before he said what he said. And so before looking at the younger son in Luke 15, let's look at the beginning of Luke 15, beginning with verses number one and number two. It says... Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So we can see that there are two very different groups that are in the presence of Jesus Christ. One, the tax collectors and sinners, the other, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. Now, 
The Bible says in Luke 15, 1, that the tax collectors and the sinners gathered around to listen to Jesus. Tax collectors were officials that were hired by the Roman Empire to collect taxes from the Hebrews. They were often wealthy and often dishonest. And so the Hebrews really did not like tax collectors. But they had a special dislike for tax collectors if the tax collectors were also Hebrew. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes you'd have Roman tax collectors. They didn't like them either. But it's really bad when the folks are from your nationality that look like you, grew up where you grew up, uh, experienced some of the same things you experienced, and they are treating you unfairly. They're taking advantage of you. They're taking your hard-earned money, some for the Roman Empire, some for themselves. So he really didn't like them. Sinners were those who transgressed the, the, against the law of God by committing an immoral act or acts. Since we're in the New Testament era, we now realize that all have sinned. All right, all of us are guilty. That's not how they looked at it in that day. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law saw others as beneath them needing something that they themselves already had. So, so even though uh, Jesus was royal, Jesus was the great I am, if you will, he didn't act like that. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law were way beneath Jesus Christ, but they acted like they're the bomb. Are you with me? And everybody else is beneath them. So it was the tax collectors and the sinners who gathered around to listen to Jesus. The word listen means to give attention to something or someone. Something or someone. Have you ever been in an environment where someone was talking, something was going on, and you weren't listening? Praise Lord. I mean, you're a million miles away. You're somewhere else. And, and sometimes we act like we're listening. Sometimes we don't. If you have a cell phone or a computer, most of the time you're kind of listening. But wherever you are on that cell phone, that tablet, that computer, or in that television, that's just about where you are. You're not there. You can sit at the dinner table. You should put away all cell phones and all of that other stuff because you're not having dinner with your family if you're communicating with somebody across town. All right. So they were giving attention to Jesus Christ. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law are muttering against Jesus. And the mutter means to mumble, to grumble, or to complain sharply and indistinctly under your breath. In other words, it wasn't blurted out. It was, listen to them people. I mean, it would make no sense. The, you know, the muttering. And, I, and I'm not saying that that was the only time that happened. Because sometimes we can be in church and, and, and mutter. I mean, I mean, not this church, but some churches that does happen. Okay, so here they are. They're mumbling and grumbling and complaining under their breath indistinctly. So it's not really clear what they're saying, but you know it's not good. Okay, now the best way to understand the Pharisees and the teachers of the law is not coming from a dictionary or an encyclopedia. The best way to understand them is just hear what Jesus said about them, period. In Matthew chapter 23, verse number 1, Jesus gives a pretty good example of what he felt uh, the, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were all about. It says there in verse number 1, Then Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees are the authorized interpreters of Moses' law. This is who they are. They are the authorized. Somebody say authorized. I have the credibility. I have the authority. I am over everybody and everything. They were the authorized interpreters of Moses' law. Verse 3 says, Jesus goes on to say, So you must obey and follow everything they tell you to do. Then he takes a real sharp turn and he says, Do not, however imitate their actions because they don't practice what they preach. 
Isn't that pretty deep right there? I mean, that is a bold statement for a loving Christ, all right? They don't practice what they preach. If you continue to read there, you'll get a whole um, mouth full, head full, body full, spirit full of what he said to them after that. Now, what he's really saying is that they are a great example of disinformation or misinformation. And, and in our day and age, just to give you some up-to-date current event stuff, we got a lot of that going on. <clears throat> it really is. I'm just praying about the election, and I'll be so glad when November gets here and gone, because it's really turbulent. Now, recently you heard about the Haitians eating cats and dogs in Springfield, Ohio. Okay. And the governor of Ohio said, I wish they would just stop that. The mayor of Springfield said, stop that. The Haitians that are there are not immigrants. They are there legally, and they keep saying, and they're adding to the economy. These are bona fide citizens of our area, and they are a blessing to us. But misinformation, once it gets out, now they got school closings, and they got the office building closings, the city building closings because of bomb threats. Oh, come on. Somebody said. Yeah. Now, one, give you a couple other things. Former President Trump says he and the Republicans cut tax rates in America when he was president. Okay? Well, they did. They just didn't cut taxes for you and me. <laughs> but they definitely did cut taxes. Key findings by the Institute on Taxation and Economic Policy tells us this. America's largest Consistently profitable corporations saw their effective tax rates fall from an average of 22% a year to 12.8% after the 2008 Trump tax law went into effect. It went from 22 down to 12, okay? This is really interesting statistics. So because if you don't search this out, you don't get this. The 296 largest and consistently profitable U.S. corporations in this study paid $240 billion less in taxes from 218 to 221. Okay. Different from what they would have paid if that tax law had not gone into effect. Did you hear what I said? I didn't say $240 thousand dollars or 240 million dollars 240 billion dollars profits from the largest continuously profitable US corporations rose by 44 percent after the passage of the tax uh, tax law their federal tax bills went down 16 percent now the number of corporations paying taxes of less than 10 percent went from 56 to 95 after the tax law went into effect. Are you with me? That's companies like Walmart, Verizon, Disney, and Meta, which is Facebook. They had the largest reductions after it went into effect. So when you look at our nation right now, or for the last couple months, last couple years, you see strikes everywhere. Everybody's striking. Everybody that's part of a union, people that don't have a union wish they had a union because why are they doing that? Because the corporations are busting out of the seams making money, but they're not passing it on. And so folks have to strike and say, well, we're not going to work. That's how you do make money. You do understand. You don't make any money if we don't work. If we don't run the hotels, if we don't fly the planes, if we don't make the automobiles. Y'all stand with me. Now, you have to be mindful, really you have to be mindful because there are a lot of things in place that are designed to take your place. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like robots. Robot. Okay, robots don't call in sick. <laughs> they, they can just, just like your refrigerator, your microwave, your dishwasher, you know, your oven, you have a pretty good idea how long it's going to last. They tell you they warrant it for a certain period of time, and the part and the time they warrant it for is just about how long it's gonna last, and the day after the warranty ends, it breaks. <laughs> Are you with me? <laughs> and so that's what happens when it when it comes to things like robots. Let me just share this with you. You may notice um, when you go to the store, you don't have as many cashiers. You have automation. 
Okay? So that means someone's not going to be working. Okay? I don't know how they're going to stock the shelves yet, but they'll figure it out. Okay? When you go to the bank, have you noticed going to the bank, or do you still go to the bank? Because I'm doing a whole lot of things on my phone now. And I, I, I mean, we just got to... We just got to catch up because watch this. They're going to start closing banks mm -hmm. yeah. and they're closing banks because nobody's going to the bank. Mm -hmm. You stand with me just a little bit there. So they're making mega money. It's just not being passed on. It's called the trickle down economic setup. It just doesn't trickle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So watch this. Watch this. So just like the former policies are being exposed Jesus boldly exposes the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. Question, have you ever had anybody talk about you behind your back? <laughs> Ooh, Lord Jesus, don't you get me started up in here. <laughs> okay. All right. How did that make you feel? Anybody? Anybody want to say anything? You don't have to, but if you want to say something, I mean, this is your time. Speak now forever. Hold your peace. If you're not going to speak now, don't be talking about it later now. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. It, okay. Here we go. We got one over here, one over there. I told him, I bet you won't say it to my face. Okay. All right. <laughs> because if the 38 don't get you the 45. Oh, Lord. Lord. <laughs> Wait a minute. Dean Smith, didn't you sing a song last Sunday, man? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> go ahead. Go leave. <laughs> a leak. <laughs> There's a leak in this old building. <laughs> okay, I'm, okay. Go Praise ahead. the Lord. You know, uh, I was looking at what you said when we opened up. It, they muttered. Yeah. And and you know, it's really embarrassing. Uh, not so much that I've been talked about, and I'm going to use me. I, it may not ever happen to you, but muttering <laughs> in your you turn around and the door is open and that person that you're muttering about is standing okay. <laughs> right there. Oh, Lord. And now, don't it make you... Oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we might as well go on with the conversation at that point, <laughs> amen? <laughs> okay. So listen, we asked us, if you had a choice, what would you prefer? Mm. Would you prefer those who listen to you or those who talk about you? Listen, yeah, everybody or somebody feel differently? Listen, listen, they don't have to agree, you see, but they should listen. I like to hear what people have to say. They don't have to, I don't have to agree with them, but I do need to hear what they have to say. Amen, evangelist. You know, I have learned to listen to children. Mm. You will be surprised how a child can tell you something. Mm -hmm. But if you don't take time to listen, then you miss what the kid is trying to say. Yeah. I had a, uh, grand, a grandbaby that I held in my arms. That was years ago, of course. And I was trying to find, <laughs> <laughs> to get into an apartment that I didn't quite know the uh, apartment number. It is, and I mean, it was arm baby. And he took his little finger. I know God directed him. And he pushed the button, like, the, the, you know, the apartment number. And I looked, I said, okay, I'm going to push that button. Would you believe that was the apartment Praise I was Lord. looking for? Yeah. Amen. So it's good to listen. Amen. It pays to listen in Jesus' name. So watch this. Here's the question. Why were the Pharisees and the teachers of the law then talking about Jesus? Can you remember why they were talking about Jesus? Anybody? Anybody? See, this is a Bible study, so we're reading. When we deal, deal with a lesson, let me just say this. Do you know what a lesson, every sermon that you hear, every Sunday school class that you, that you attend, you should get that into your spirit because it's your responsibility to teach it once it's done. Okay? So why then were they talking about Jesus, muttering about Jesus? Well, this, anybody? anybody? Okay. All right. Well, it wasn't um, preaching what they were taught, which is the law. Okay, he wasn't preaching the law. Anybody else? Okay, here we got right there. We got, okay. He was speaking to people that they felt he shouldn't be talking to. Speaking to people that they felt he shouldn't be talking to. But the to. thing, though, the people they, he, they felt, the Pharisees felt that Jesus shouldn't be talking to were listening. The others were gossiping. They isn't, weren't that, listening isn't that so real? Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Who, do you, who would you rather have, somebody listening to you or talking about you? Listening. Well, I'm not sure what you all really want. 
Would you rather a person listen to you or talk about you? Okay, they do both, but which would you prefer? <laughs> Listening, and if they're going to talk about you, wouldn't you rather they talk about you to your face, yeah. tell you what they don't like, because they probably say it nicer. Go ahead, Sister Tess, go ahead. I think they were jealous but of the crowds he was getting. Okay, that, that's always a thing. I think, I think uh, Donald Trump, when you hear about crowds and sizes, boy, that'll rub him every single minute, won't it? Okay, now watch this. The scripture says in Luke 15, 2b, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. What kind of man is this? What kind of God man is, is this that he welcomes sinners and he eats with them? That, that behavior or message, he says, not get this, not that his behavior or his message was ungodly or weak, but because he shared his message with those they felt were ungodly and weak. Amen? You with me? So, so we can look at certain individuals, and when we see them, immediately we put them in a category. I'm just talking about the saints right now. I'm not even talking about the Pharisees and, and the teachers of the law. Sometimes we could almost fit into that category. Because as soon as I see someone, I can almost size them up and decide if they're saved or not saved. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not careful, I might even size them up and decide if they either, should they either even be saved. I don't even think they, they want being. I'm, I'm talking about just some. Go ahead, Senor. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of times, I've had friends and, and, I, and I've had friends that sometimes attach themselves close, real close, to where they become jealous if you should associate with somebody mm, else. Mm, mm. And to the point to where it actually upsets them. And I was looking at what you said earlier where you said the uh, Hebrews that were tax collectors mm -hmm. were even despised, if you will, more than the one, the, yeah. the, the sinners, if you will. Yeah. That, and and it, it's like that. And so with Jesus, I would think sometimes those that would go with him would see him, you know, associate yeah. and become even more, more irate. Irritated. Yeah, yeah irritated. the crowds were bigger. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's, he's able to reach people that they never thought about reaching. They never wanted to reach them. They never, they never felt like they were worthy to, to be reached. And, and whenever you are a, a church, a body of believers, and you think like that, you might as well just change the name. We're just a country club. You know what I mean? We're just a, I'm a clown. We're just a sophisticated gang. I mean, you, you with me just a little bit? I mean, okay, okay, watch this. Watch this. His behavior, his message was not different. It wasn't ungodly or weak. They were upset because he shared with the ungodly and the weak. Now, that helps me to understand who we should be ministering to. Everybody should have a mentee. If you are who you say you are and who you believe he created you to be, you should have a mentee. Okay. This is what the scripture says in Matthew 11, chapter 2 through 6. Matthew 11, beginning in verse 2. When John was in prison, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, are you the one who is to come or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, this is what he said. You go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cleansed. The deaf hear and the dead are raised. And the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Amen. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. So what is he doing now? He's saying, you go back and you tell John, I am dealing with the people that nobody has dealt with all these years. Mm -hmm. Saying, they're saying I'm coming, 
but they're not acting like I'm coming. Once I get here, get this, they act like they're the messiahs. All right? Now watch this. John 3, 16, uh, when Jesus said, whosoever believes in him shall not perish, he meant whosoever believes in him shall not perish. Doesn't matter where you come from. Doesn't matter what, what your family tree looks like. That does not matter. Doesn't matter what you've accomplished or have not accomplished. If you believe in me, you shall not perish. Paris. Now, Jesus, knowing that the Pharisees and the teachers of the law are talking uh, about him for dealing with the middle class or the lower class, he shares three parables with them. Three parables. Mm -hmm. Because he's dealing with the middle class or the lower class. He's dealing with the people that they would never deal with. They're, listen to this here. They're too clean to deal with them. They're too clean to deal with it. You should never come to church so clean that you can't hug somebody that's not clean. See what I mean? Because that, that suit can get cleaned or you just get another one. Because if God gave you the ability to get that one, he'll give you the ability to get another one if, he, if you mess it up in service. Are you staying with me? So sometimes people come with, with makeup from the night before. All right. Okay. Kind of, kind of, in other words, they look like they did the night before. But that's just because God is preparing them to be who he created them to be. Right. Now watch this. He believes we've been prepared to help them be who they are created to be. Yeah. All right. You all stand with me there just a little bit. Okay. All right. So he leaves them with these three parables. A parable is a simple story used to illustrate a mor moral or spiritual lesson. A simple story used to illustrate a moral or spiritual level uh, lesson. Somebody say simple. simple. Okay. Everything we present and you present should be simple. Boy, that was quiet. Okay. Can I share this with you? One of the reasons that we don't share the gospel as much as we should is that we don't feel we're equipped as much as we should be. Okay. But what we fail to realize, the average individual, all they need is simple. Because they can't take nothing other than simple. Now, just because you may have 10 scriptures under your belt, wait a minute, they don't even know one. And so you have to take a scripture and you got to break that thing up and deliver it to them in a simple way. There's a, 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 a thing called kiss. Yeah. Keep it simple, saints. Somebody say saints. Yeah, yeah because we're all saints, but we just have to, we have to keep it simple. A child should be able to understand what you're saying. And if they don't understand what you're saying, I can tell you this, you lost 75% of your audience. I can get three people to say amen. Okay, all right, all right. So keep it simple, saints. Now, watch this. His parables are simple but skillfully delivered. He uses words like lost and found, joyfully, rejoice, celebrate, dead and alive. I mean, it's amazing how he puts this thing together in this short period. Number one, he deals with the lost sheep. Look at Luke 15, 3 through 7. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you have has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99, and this is really interesting to me, in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, before I go any further, what he's saying is the people that are saved shouldn't be so pitiful that when someone comes in or someone lost, you can't go after them because these people still need, still need to be cared for. He leaves them in what? The open air. Why? Because they know what they're supposed to do. They know how to carry themselves. They know how to behave. Yes. Yes. Am I working with some halfway mature saints of God? Yes. I don't need you to call my name. I know my name. Yes. Yes. Why do you think I tell people when they ask me all the time, what's your name? BG. Why don't I tell them BG? Because I don't want them to ever think that I think I'm better than they are. Amen. Mm -mm. See, why, what's your name? Okay, you're brother. And I'm going to call everybody sister. 
and everybody elder and everybody minister and everybody missionary and everybody AP and everybody pastor and everybody bishop. But when it comes to me, I'm BG because I'm the servant. Are you staying with me? If I don't see myself in that light, I'm in real trouble. I'm in, somebody say, I'm in real trouble because now I start acting like I'm better than you. You got to respect my title. But watch this. I don't give you a title. I'm BG. Somebody say, BG. BG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Folks used to get upset with me with that. The seasoned saints. Not, not, not the sinners and the, and the tax collectors. Just the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. You know, no, I hate calling you BG. I just can't stand calling you BG. Okay, well, what's your initials? Can I use your initials? I wouldn't dare. At one point, I started, you know, I started to say, let's, start, let's drop all the titles and let's just call an individual by their first name. Then I thought you all probably want to get rid of me then in Jesus' name. Let's keep going. All right. So watch this. He leaves them in, in the open country and goes after the lost sheep until he finds it. And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders. What does that mean? I mean, watch this. Watch this. I know you can't make it on your own, so what am I going to do? I'm going to carry you. I'm going to carry you because you're not equipped to make it by yourself. So he puts him on, on his shoulder, carries it, and he goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. <laughs> so it's not enough that he finds the sheep. Now he starts calling people to say, hey, I need you to rejoice with me. Watch this. Be happy with me because we found the sheep. Come on, we found the sheep. We're not keeping this thing under wraps. We want people to know what we have done. I tell you, notice what he says in verse 7. I tell you in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Isn't that something? One that repents over the rest of us. How many of us have repented? Okay, so watch this. If we want to make heaven happy, we got to get someone who has not repented. And bring them into a state of repentance. Now heaven is going to rejoice. More so. I mean they rejoice over us too. But they rejoice more. Over those that repent. Come on. You all stand with me? Okay. All right. So, so this is helping us. Because there's work for us to do. All right. There, there, there's work for us to. Repent means to change. When you change your thoughts, it leads to a change in your heart and in your walk. Yeah. Acts chapter 3, 19, this is what it says. Repent, change, turn, repent then, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. I got to turn. Remember, we established it's more than just saying I'm sorry because you can do the same thing all over again. Question, do you think repentance is still needed today? Praise the Lord. All right. Yeah, yeah. That almost goes without saying, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. But, 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 but I don't know if we hear about it enough. I don't know if we're scared to say you need to repent. I don't even know if we're scared to talk about sin anymore. Because everything, it's my thing. I do what I want to. Well, who told you that? Where did you get that from? Go ahead, evangelist. You know, most people really don't know why Jesus came. And the scripture clearly says, I didn't come to call the righteous to repentance, but sinners. Jesus died for you and I, sinners. We were sinners at one time. Yeah. And that was his purpose. Not because we are saved now. Yeah. It's because we once were sinners. Yeah. And he died for us. Yeah, and that's, that's his purpose. The Pharisees didn't understand. Yeah, that's a deep thing right there. That's a deep thing, man. We were sinners. Yeah, now we're not sinners. We just sin sometime. <laughs> Is that okay for me to say that? Go right ahead, CAP. Yes, sir. You know, there's a lot in words. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I look at the word repent, that was a word that I never used growing up. That wasn't in yeah. my vocabulary. Uh, it, there was no need for it to be there until someone introduced me to Christ. Yeah. That's when that word came into 
my life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I say even with sinners that are lost, not knowing Christ, they don't know this unless Christ gets to them, introduced yeah. to them. Yeah. Yeah. The word even repent, every word that brings you to Christ. Yeah. You know, John the Baptist went saying repent. Yeah. You know, but. Yeah, get your, get your mind, repent, turn DP. Yeah. yeah. Get your mind straight, return to God. And be refreshed, DP. I was going to say, BG, repent. The definition of that is to change your thinking, right? Yeah. Like, like turn away from how you're thinking right now, like literally. So specifically, you know, it's so interesting. I love the way you preach, talk, the way you, your, your psychological profile is simply because it's so word heavy. Because if you don't think like Christ is telling you to think in reality, then you can't be what you're supposed to be in order yeah. for you to be what he's trying to make you be, you yeah. know? So when you say stuff like repent, anytime I've ever had a conversation with somebody and we actually just really have a real conversation, usually it's a difference between their perspective of what they think God is saying mm. rather than what he actually is stating mm. in whatever the scripture is or whatever it is. So it's usually context. So I've always, when my relationship with God is like, I always say, I don't have context yet because many of my people die because of lack of knowledge, yeah, right? So I have to accept yeah. I don't have all of, obviously, God's knowledge, but really yeah. all of knowledge in the world, really. So I still got to learn from people who would be called sinners, yeah. if you, you know what I mean? Yeah. So at the end of the yeah. day, so I am still have to be humble enough for me to be able to get the information from them, but at the same time, I still got to agree with God out of context yeah. until I get my context. So I still got to have faith over logic or reason yeah you know so faith in him so his character and his way is the reason why i believe in him and his and, and his promises like she said you know he's the only one with the answer for eternal life there's nobody else i've nobody. researched all that anyway yeah. point i'm making is how do you get to be that way thinking like that and like what do you think makes that yeah. make you make you want to be like that makes you be like that like where does that come from yeah that's a good thing that's a real good that's thing I mean. right there uh, AP is going to share and as he's going uh, remember scripture says if anyone is in Christ he is a new creation old things pass away become all things become new um, in the multitude of counselors there's safety so when we're in a such session like this and we're talking individuals have different perspectives if we can take those perspectives and tie them into the word of God, I didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners unto the repentance. And I learned that we've all sinned and we've all come short of the glory of God. And watch this. So then when I realize that, that means whether that individual is a tax collector or a sinner or a Pharisee or a tax collector, we're all kind of together. We're all kind of in the same boat. We're all kind of the same family. You know, go ahead, AP, and then I'm going to expound on it a little I'll more. Honor, Pastor. Yes, sir. And I, the word, you just said it. Uh, we, we become a new creature, a new creation. Uh, to me, too, I'd like to uh, inject that uh, repent is, uh, we know the turning around and everything. Uh, but repent represent a new a new creature, um, turning away, uh, doing the work, and I, I want to add, eager, eager to eager to do the work. Yeah. In other words, uh, that ninety nine, you know, I mean, they were there for a reason, um, and, and 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 we want to be part of the, yeah. that ninety nine, and not and not the lost ones. And I think repenting means uh, uh, going forward. Uh, you know, we. We're all of God's creation. Mm -hmm. We are motivated by the Holy Spirit. And that really should drive us or push us to, do, to look beyond ourselves. Amen. Amen. And we do that because we have a relationship with Christ. Yeah. We know God. Yeah. And, and we just make it happen. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. so many people that are in our environment that needs to be a witness yeah, to. Yeah, you're so right. Say, AP, you're right. Okay, let's deal with this here. Let's start with this. Let's start with this. You can answer if you want to. What do you think about me? I mean, you don't have to answer, but I think it starts kind of there. Because what I think about me may not really be what it what really is. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law thought themselves to be above everyone else. 
Jesus just busted that thing all the way up and said, listen, don't try to imitate them because they don't practice what they preach. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was bold right there. And so now we have to get to the place. And, I, and, and, I'm, and I'm saying that because that's real. I think I asked my wife maybe five times, and I'm stretching it, what do you think about my sermon? I wouldn't ask her that because I didn't, I didn't know if I could stand the answer. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So when you start asking people, what do you think about me? Yeah. And, and if they have permission to be real, then we can begin to develop. Because that's what happens in the business world. In the business world, uh, when you make a presentation, they critique the presentation. Amen. Amen. When you make a statement, and in, and in class we make statements, those statements should be critiqued. Uh, if, if it's in, out of the mouths of two or three witnesses, if, it, if it's in the word and it's supported in two or three, by two or three in witnesses, DP, okay, if there are two or three witnesses, then watch this, then it can be confirmed. Mm -hmm. But if it's not confirmed, and watch this, and I can see myself as, I never saw myself as that good, that's why I didn't ask her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it didn't matter whether 20 people joined or nobody joined, I didn't ask her. Because I don't know if I'm ready to get the answer. I'm going to ask you this, and DP's going to talk. How many people have you asked what they think about your walk with Jesus Christ? Go ahead, DP. <laughs> That's very good. That's very good. Um, I was going to actually add, I don't, to be honest with you, this is really just a statement. I'm, okay. I don't know how well people in the church environment could handle someone, and I'm not trying to say, I'm just saying in general, <laughs> okay. from my experience, can handle someone challenging their beliefs, if you will, and not even in a challenging way, almost like not agreeing necessarily, especially if they feel strongly about that position that yeah. they have, you know yeah. what I mean? So being able to do that in a peaceful way, chill, and still be friends and cool with that person, I think that's a skill that is a gift from the Holy Spirit, really. <laughs> Hey, you definitely need the Holy Spirit, man, for real. For real, you definitely need the Holy Spirit. Now, keep in mind, if we can't do that in the church, how are we going to do it in the street? Amen. Amen. Go ahead. You know, I would like to kick back on what he said, the question he asked earlier. How do we get there? The, uh, the way we can get to where Jesus wants us to be because... We should desire to be like Jesus, not like the world. Now, and the only way we can be like Jesus is get to know him. And the way we get to know him is to read his word, read this Bible. And I'm going to say this quickly. Not only read the word, start living the word. Yeah. Yeah. And if we live the word, we are where we are supposed to be the yeah, praise say the Lord. they live. Amen. Now we gotta now we gotta talk because you the way you live the word may not be the way I live the word. Because see, if I don't speak in tongues, I'm not saved. If I'm not baptized in Jesus' name, I'm not saved. If I baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, I'm not come on. So how you see it and how I see it and how the word see it and how we confirm it, it's gonna be vastly different. It's going to, all, how I was raised, what I was taught. Watch this. I can tell you this here. If you pray anything besides Matthew 6 and 9, you're praying good. It's just a way. I'm just telling you what, I, what the Lord loves. It is, somebody say truth. How I see it does not make it so. Praise, are you all with me now? The Pharisees saw it one way. Go ahead, AP. The Pharisees saw it one Hallelujah. way. Amen. The tax collectors and the sinners saw it another way. Jesus comes in and busts up everybody's part. <laughs> the, Amen. Bishop, Amen. Uh, I, I have in mind one word, and I think, besides being humble, but respect. Yeah. And I think Jesus respected them. Respect, yeah. because you have to respect. I, I, you know, I do a lot of... Uh, grief counseling and, and when I sit at the table with those that are going through I learned from when my mother went on to glory mm -hmm. with my siblings we had to respect yeah. each other's grief mm -hmm. you know and no matter what we're going through if I'm if I'm going to the sinners the, the sinners if I'm going somewhere yeah, yeah. okay then I just need to respect yeah the the the, the journey respect yeah, yeah. those that I'm around yeah. and then but and sometimes, a lot of times, that means 
humbling. Yeah. You know, if you want to be BG, let me finish. Yeah. <laughs> and I want to, I want to call you Bishop. Yeah. Please respect me, Bishop. Yeah, I, I'm good. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't bother me because I'm between Bishop, BG, Pancho, Lloyd, Elder. It don't matter to me. I know who I am. You know what I'm saying? I know who I am in the name of Jesus. People tell me something. I say, don't, don't let that bother. Cause they, if they call me, okay, uh, pastor. Oh, I'm so sorry, Bishop. I say, don't let that bother you. I know who I am. Yeah. Don't let them see people have been have been beat up so bad. That's not that's not my title. Yeah, yeah. Well, they've been beat up so bad they scared to even speak to you. Yeah. Amen. I don't know how you're gonna deal with it. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. Now keep in mind, Evangelist is gonna share, and then Misha is gonna share, and then we're gonna get out of here. Okay. Let me clarify what I mean by living the word. Okay. And it's not I never seen where Jesus said, You speak in tongues. Mm -hmm. I'm not speaking about right. that. Right. But the word clear to say, love your neighbor as yourself. Yes. yes. Love the Lord thy God with all the heart. I'm talking about basic scripture. It's okay. what I believe in. Reading, living it, and walking it. Okay. No I, other I can agree with you that pray. No conditions. Yes. No conditions. Does anyone in here have something against somebody? Okay, okay, got real quiet. All right, got real quiet. Okay, so that's the forgiveness part. That you, if you do not forgive, neither can you what? Be forgiven. Okay, you do know that scripture? Yeah. You know that scripture. So why are you still holding that stuff in your heart then acting like God doesn't know what's in your heart? Okay, go ahead, missionary. Oh. I'm sorry. I was, I'm sorry. Um, uh, I was just going to say that it's out of respect. So when people say, oh, I'm sorry, I'll pass, I mean, I mean bishop instead of pastor, it's because they respect you and they just want to get it yeah, right. And, and, and I'm good with that. I just want them to know I'm not uptight about it yeah. like they are sometimes, yeah. you know. And, and I received that. You want to say something? Yeah, I did. Else? Yes, ma'am. I'm going way back. Okay. But I just because okay. I got the mic. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you, said, you, you, you mentioned... Uh, who told you? That was the question you asked. Okay. Who told you it was your thing, you can do what you want to do? Mm -hmm. Well, there was a song once right. that said it was your yeah, thing. And yeah. so when you listen to that kind of stuff, it gets in you. Okay. And so it's so important it's that we thing. Yeah. It's so important <laughs> that we that we watch what we listen to and we watch what our kids are listening yeah. and watching to. Cuz so. see when that thing get in your spirit, here I am. I heard <laughs> that thing like 50 years ago, but I still know how it sounds. Isn't that amazing? Okay, let's move on. Sister Bernie, uh, got Maxine Bernie got her hand up. And then we're going to go on. We're going to go to Luke 15. Hey. Um, coming to this church from church in New York, we didn't have titles. Mm. And I, when I heard the titles and how people call you and how they, you said BG, and then I realized when I talk to you, it's when you say, how do I think about you? Your title is bishop. That's out there in the street for everybody. But when I talk to you here, I'll say pastor. But when I talk about you, I say my shepherd, because that's how I feel. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. Thank the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Well, let's see if we can get through this in Jesus' name. Number two, the lost coin. <laughs> or suppose, this is the second parable, a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repenteth. Okay, now here it is. Like, this is a $50 bill. Okay, for some, this is about the amount of their daily wage because that's what one of her silver coins was, uh, the wage that she would make in a day. Sometimes people make $50. Sometimes they make $100 or $200 or three, four, five hundred dollars $500. Or maybe they make $25. I don't know. But whatever it is, whatever you made for that day's wages, if you lose it and you're looking for it, come on. Find us keeper. See, see what I'm <laughs> Okay, watch that. <laughs> Amen. And, 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 and watch this. And I don't know if you've ever lost something that's kind of valuable to you. You are kind of looking for it until you find it, right? Now, if I left that $50 there, I've already, I already know where folks' minds are. Find us keepers. I better pick my money up, huh? <laughs> All right. But you understand, so it says that she lost her coin and she began to sweep her house. And I think most of us have done that looking for something precious and special. The first parable we had, and we can see the first two parables, we can see how important repentance is to the kingdom of God. Amen? 
We come to the last one, the lost son. Jesus continued, verse 11. There was a man who had two sons. I got to remember to put my money in my pocket right here. Man, you know. Okay. The younger one said to the father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided the property between them. Okay? Let me just say this. Is anybody here broke me something, $50 for anything? I mean, don't just raise your hand if you need the $50. But I mean, do you really need the $50? I mean, something is really drastically happening in your life. <clears throat> Okay, all right. Maybe, maybe you don't want to say it. Maybe you want to say it. Okay, come and get it, Sister Cornelius. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That was not my intent, but to God be the glory. <laughs> Amen. All right. So now we're looking at the son because we understand the importance of repentance. Based on the scripture, all right, the younger son said to the father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Question, based on the scripture, do you think the father moved too quickly when he divided the property between his sons? Okay, no? Missionary, I'm looking at you. You sure? Okay, all right. Okay, let me ask you then. DP's got his hand up back there. I'm just wondering, do you all have any children? And if they came and said, give me my share of the estate, would you do it? No. Okay, so, <laughs> yeah. so he didn't move too fast, but you wouldn't move that fast. Okay, go ahead, DP. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I could have never gave him all of it. <laughs> Especially knowing the type of kid, you know, you know your kids. Yeah, you know, your kids are different. Each one is so unique. So you know the one that's gonna burn through the money. To me, I don't yeah. know. So if you're a good manager and you don't see good management in that kid, so to me, the only thing I could think is maybe his dad said, you know what, we can make this money back when he get his mind right. Okay. <laughs> you know. Okay. Okay. He's got, but his stuff is gone now. I mean, I don't even know how he gets it. <laughs> Dad money and the brother money. Brother already. He already said he ain't getting none of my stuff, man. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, missionary. I just wanted to say I believe he gave it to him because he knew he, he knew what like DP said, what type of child he had or mm -hmm. son he had. And he knew he was coming back because he knew he was, I think he knew he was squandered. He looked for him every day. Yeah. That's part of the scripture yeah, saying that he yeah. looked for him. So. Yeah, boy, I tell you, but when I ask you if you would do it, yeah, no. I mean, you all are real quick. I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. Okay, yeah, we got two more. You got 30 seconds each one. Then we're going to read okay. all the way through. Quickly, Bishop, I think it was an issue of his heart. Okay. Because uh, I know I do some things. That I, I can sit here and tell you what I won't do. Mm -hmm. But when Sister Harden gets involved in the issue of my heart, that sort of changes okay. things. Okay. And so I think if whatever the father, he was prompted maybe by the Holy yeah. Spirit. Yeah. You know, yeah. something got in his heart for him to do that. Because yeah. that wasn't his A plan. Yeah, <laughs> praise the Lord. Boy, this gets deep. Go ahead, right quick, right quick. I, I feel that the father knew something was wrong with the kid. His son in the first place. Okay. And yeah, he saw his uh, what is it? Okay. Uh, he saw what kind of child he was. Yeah. And I feel like by him doing this would teach him a lesson. Okay. Praise See, the Lord. Could he okay. Handle okay, but 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 none of us are willing to teach the lesson though. Okay. I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to feel, you know. It's okay for the father. I understand why he did what he did, but it ain't my thing. You know, it's my thing. Bishop, it's it's taken away. But he can't, but even if you have it, because we, it's relative. Because what do you have? Just give him, go, go ahead, just give him, give him half. Because half is going to go to one son and half is going to go to the other son. So just go ahead and give it, go ahead, go get, go to your bank account, give your, your daughter half. Bishop, <laughs> <laughs> no, what the point Jesus was trying to make is that the son came back, not what the father gave, but what come back. If the father hadn't given the son, the son wouldn't have been lost, and the the mess the purpose of the message would have been lost. Okay, all the right. The title That's would not a, have you, been "You Can Come Home" if yeah, the son never left. Yeah, if the son never leaves. The question is, we had all of us had children leave. We didn't give them half their stuff. I'm just talking about what's reality now. I am saying we have this example. DP said we have this example, and it's not the example we're willing to follow. That's the point I'm trying to bring out. So I know, so we have to pray and say, Lord, I need you to soften me a little bit more because I'm not nearly there. I'll give him $10. 
I'm looking at missionary. <laughs> Go ahead, DP. <laughs> no, you are so right. It's so right because there's no way I would have did the, the full amount. Like yeah. especially if I did, if I didn't think that was the case. What also shocks me is the fact that Jesus is using this as an example and saying that you know. So we're literally even right now, I'm shocked. It's like you're supposed to give all of it up. Yeah. For your for the faith in a person, even if you see. That you know what I mean? Like I don't even know what he see. You know, yeah. so many ways you can you yeah. can you can you can jump to too many conclusions in this story. I think it's really the point. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like there's a lot of conclusions you can jump to. So I like what she said. Ultimately, it's just the man's heart was in the right position, really and right the right. son's heart was in the right position after he went through the suffering. Yeah. So the heart position yeah. is really the main yeah. thing, and everything else I'm trying to tease out of it is too much. It's I too much. I can't. It's too much because Jesus doesn't even deal with it. He doesn't even question. The father doesn't even question where you're going. Why do you want it? What's what's it for? He does none of that. He just. He just divides it between them, okay? And it says, after he had spent, verse number 14, after he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. Not long after he got the money, verse 13, not long after that, the young son got together. All he had set off for a distant country, and there squandered his, living, his wealth in wild living. That's deep right there. So it probably saw that a little bit in him before that happened, because we know our kids. Yeah. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his, his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. Not that they didn't have it to give, but they weren't willing to share what they had. Okay, when it comes to money or resources, normally where what is available to us is only available if we don't need it. You do know that, right? Yeah, okay. People don't give you, don't loan you money, don't give you money, don't loan you money, don't do anything yeah. if they think that you that you need it. Our first loan here was for six hundred dollars to a deacon to a deacon who needed help because he couldn't get it from nowhere else. Mm -hmm. So we loaned him the six hundred dollars. That was like I think in the nineteen eighties. Okay. Since then we've loaned six hundred thousand dollars to people in the same condition but needed help and they couldn't go nowhere else to get it. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Because they have been supportive of us, and we're family, so we support them. No questions asked. Nothing. You don't have to explain anything unless you choose to explain something. You don't have to explain anything because we're here to help you. Praise the Lord. Now, that's based on 99% individuals who have also helped us. Yeah, okay. Because not, we're not as good as the Father. Now, I'm trying to tell you right now, okay? <laughs> I want you to know that. So the scripture says, 1 John chapter 3, 17, If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? i got to be able to see where you're hurting, and, and I have to be empathetic, and i got to help you in your hurting situation. I don't have to understand how you got there. You may not even want to talk to me about how you got there. And normally, people don't want to talk about it. All right, and we can't charge interest because that's scripture. Amen. It's Old Testament scripture, but it's good for the New Testament. Yes, All right, have you ever had a need and nobody helped you? Yeah, yeah. Amen. yeah. amen. That's a bad place, isn't it, right there? Okay, uh, did you ask for help? Yeah. See, that was a little, that's a little, a little quieter. You, they didn't help you, but it was harder to ask, wasn't it? Yeah. It was harder to ask. And then if you didn't ask and you didn't get it, then maybe you just stop asking. Mm -hmm. am, I, am I with you? You didn't go to the next person, the third person, the fourth person, the fifth person, because watch this, we don't like rejection. And if you're not going to help me, now we start, you didn't help me, you know what I mean? And sometimes they don't help you because God has set it up that that's not the person to help you. Given it shall be given unto you, but it doesn't tell who's going to give to you. So that means I may have to ask the next person and the next person and the next person. How aggressive are you? How much do you trust me? Do you believe that there's a blessing for you somewhere? Okay, all right. Give him a praise. We got to go. We got to go. We got to go. All right. Last point I want to make. The two parables that were before this parable, the owners searched for them, the sheep and the lost coin. But not so with the son. Yeah. He didn't search for the son mm -hmm. because watch this. What I have learned and what we have learned is almost everybody I know has a mind of their own. Okay, Bishop. And until they're ready to make the adjustment, nothing real is going to happen. Okay. Are you staying with me? Alcohol and drug addiction. I got to be ready to be delivered to be delivered. An unforgiving heart, a foul mouth, an abusive household, or even a dirty and un unkept household. Your dishes are going to be dirty until you decide I'm going to wash them. Okay. Amen. All right. 
So then he comes. Let's finish it up. When he had come to his senses, verse number 17, he said, how many of my father's high servants have I have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your higher servants. Now, even as though the father, even as the son was set, had his mind set to, to, to go back home, the father who was at home was constantly looking, I believe, and praying for his son to come back home. We have to always, let me say something too, just like we would not give him the money when he got ready to come home, now we're going to act funny about whether we're going to let him in or not. Am I talking to three people here? I mean, come on, because we're wired that way. So it's just like the son was ready to come back, the father was also ready for him to come back. Let's wrap, wrap it up. So he got up. Somebody say he got up, verse number 20, and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and filled with compassion for him. So watch this. He ran to his son, yeah. threw his arms around him, and kissed him. Man, that's a real good daddy. Somebody say that's a super daddy, man. The son said, Father, because he had it in his heart what he was going to say. I have sinned against heaven against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. I can even say, stop talking like that. But you're my boy. You're my son. But the father said, quick, bring the best robe. Put it on him. Put a ring on his finger. Sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and what? We're going to have a party. <laughs> For his son, this son of mine was dead. He's alive again. He was lost and he was found. So what did they do? They began to party, party, party. No matter where you are, no matter what you've done, no matter how you've fallen, you can always come back home. Give him praise, give him glory, give him honor. Woo. Here's our trivia. It's on the screen. When Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? How many times did Peter suggest and how many times did Jesus say to forgive in response to Peter's question? Okay, that's a piece of cake. But you got to give us the right answer. Otherwise, you're not going to get no $2. All right. All right. It's a piece of cake. So let's do it. Father, thank you so much for this time together with you and with each other. Thank you for the love we have for each other and the way we help each other and minister to each other. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless God. Give them a good hand clap of praise. Everybody hug somebody. Let them know you love them with Jesus' name. And starting next week, you can get your snack coming into Bible study instead of going out. Because some of you just might be hungry. <laughs>